Okay, awesome. Uh, well, thanks again, David, for having me here uh, for Friendsgiving 2022. Appreciate it. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Um, what I'd like to do today, guys, is uh, go over with you um, a couple of tools that you can use for day trading to uh, gauge intraday market sentiment, you know, to help you determine if the day is likely to trend or go sideways, right? Um, and you can also use it to time entries and exits. Because if you know that the market is likely to trend, then, you know, you want to go for that triple or home run trade, right? If you know that the market is likely to go sideways, then you don't want to overstay your welcome. Like today, for example, okay? You just in and out. Just get that base hit and then look for the next setup. Um, so there's a couple of tools that we can use for timing entries and exits as well. And in a few minutes, I will show you exactly what that is. Uh, but before we begin, I must remind you that trading does carry significant risk. And all information in this webinar is provided for educational purposes only and is not an offer or a recommendation to trade future stocks, options, or Forex, okay? So, all right, now that it's out of the way, a little bit about me. Um, I've been involved in the financial market since 2006. Over all the years, I've made just about every mistake possible in my own trading. Um, and so I've learned what works and what doesn't. Um, I've had different mentors from some of the guys that are speaking here today. Uh, Norm Hallett, you know, I, I bought his program a long time ago. Doc Severson, who's coming on board here after me. Um, so uh, we used to work together, actually. And uh, Doc's a great guy. So, uh, but yeah, I've learned a lot. And actually, some of the principles that I learned from Doc, I went over and you know, I've just I've kind of put my own twist on it and gone over it in a previous um, the last time, I think it was September for your Synergy Traders event, September, David. Um, but um, in any case, you know, I, I've learned what works and what doesn't. And I think it seems like that's the kind of the key is like you have to try things until you figure out what doesn't work before you finally realize, OK, I've tried this half a dozen times. Or if you're like me, you know, 12 to 15 or even 20 times. And it's like, hey, this just does not work, right? So today, I'd like to show you something that does work and how, you know, the majority of the time and how you can use market internals, you know, more specifically, the, the, the New York Stock Exchange tick and the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline line to gauge intraday market sentiment, all right? So what are, what we'll do, here's pretty much the agenda, market internals, right? What we're going to do is we'll go, we'll define what the market channels are, why they're important, and how do we use them? Okay. So, what are they? Uh, well, they're tools and or indicators which provide overall market sentiment. Okay. You can use them for intraday to kind of gauge that intraday momentum, right? And uh, we'll use the NYSE tick and the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline, decline line. Now, you may ask, well, why are you using that? The New York Stock Exchange is the broad market. You can look at that as the broad market, right? You've got S&P stocks in there, NASDAQ stocks in there, Dow stocks and so forth. So we might as well just look at the broad market, okay? There are, there is, um, you know, a NASDAQ advanced decline line, a NASDAQ tick, an S&P advanced decline line and all that. But at some point you got to say, okay, I'm looking at enough stuff. If you look at too many things, you won't be able to make a decision because they're conflicting with each other. So you've got to just narrow it down. So in my opinion, the best way to do it is to go with the broad market, all right? So why are they important? They provide insight on buying and selling pressure of the underlying equities. So, you know, if you're trading, like, for example, if you're a futures trader or if you trade the Qs or the SPY and, you're date, and you day trade those instruments, you can use these. Um, you know, the diamonds, if you trade the diamonds, um, or if you're a futures trader and you trade the S&P, NASDAQ 100, the Russell, okay, the Dow, you can use these market internals. Uh, if you're trading something like crude, oil, or gold futures contracts, you, you're not really going to, you know, apply this to those markets, but definitely the, the, the indices, um, they can help 
keep perspective of minor moves and objectively define the trend of the day. Okay, for example, if the market is clearly going to trend, the internals will tell you that, hey, chances are this first hour, you know, by the end of the first hour, the market internals will tell you, chances are we will trend today or chances are, you know, we're going to just see two-sided market where you're looking to fade extremes, right? So because, you know, 70 to 80 percent or yeah, 70, probably more like 70 to 75 percent of the time, you know, the market's just doing this, right? And the other 20 to 30 percent of the time, it's actually trending up or down, right? Um, so you can use internals during that first hour to determine if we're likely to see you know, this or a trend. Uh, and so you could take advantage of staying one-sided and and taking advantage of that trend and then you know adding to your position as as the market is continuing to move higher throughout the trading day. You know, or in a, if you're expecting a two-sided day based on what I'm going to show you today, you get you get in and get out. You just you get that base hit. You know, it's not the market's not providing it to you. Okay, in a two-sided day. Just get what you can, okay? The market may not be providing it, you know, the the the, the gains there, so you just get what you can. Get that base hit, um, and they also can give you systematic. I'm going to say entry and exit points because, right, right. If it's a if it's potentially a long exit point, it could that could lead to a you know it could be a short entry, right? Um, and so they will give you systematic exit points and confirm uh, like a momentum shift during extreme market movements. And I'll show you what I'm talking about, okay? Um, on the NICE, on the New York Stock Exchange tick, each value represents the number of issues uh, on the New York Stock Exchange trading on an uptick versus a downtick. For, so for example, 1300 stocks trading on uptick and 1100 stocks trading on downtick would give you a plus 200 tick reading, okay? So in a nutshell, what are those key levels on the New York Stock Exchange tick? Okay. And for the most part, this is, this is what they are here. Um, when we're seeing uh, the tick range bound between like minus five to 600 and plus minus, plus, minus, plus 600 to uh, 500, that suggests more of a neutral reading or just noise, right? Choppy market conditions. So you so you can plan accordingly. You know, you the, and, and on days like this where you're seeing a neutral bias in the tick, this is your expectation, right? So the the goal is to you know possibly look at trading in. Um, let me change the color here. If I can get this thing to work, color. And and buying lows and selling highs, right? But in a trending market, you know, if this is going, if you start, if you're selling here, you're just going to get stopped out because the market is going to likely go higher. Um, and when the market starts to trend up, for example, okay. You'll typically see plus 800 readings, you know, or you'll see the tick actually skewed between minus 300 and plus 600. Okay, so I'll I'll give David this PDF so you guys can kind of use these tick levels as a reference or a guide, like kind of guideline, um, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Plus, I got some image, some charts we'll look at too that'll really it, then it'll jump out at you and it'll make sense. Um, and then any time that you see a extreme tick reading. Let me change the color of that. This is set up for um, this is set up for darker. That's still too bright. This is set up for darker charts. Um, blue. There we go. Anytime you see a minus nine hundred or minus one thousand tick reading, okay. If it's at the end of a sustained move, okay, and that's the key. If it's at the end of a sustained move. For example, to the downside, 
it signals strong selling, which normally cannot be sustained, and it, or some type of exhaustion, right? If it's at the beginning of a sustained move, or it's at the beginning of a move, for example, the market moves down, okay, and you get that extreme extreme tick reading after you know one, two, three, or four swings of the downside, chances are it's exhaustion, okay. If you get this reading here at the beginning of a move, like let's say the market has been balancing up at the top here or something like that, and you get it at the beginning of a move right there, and this is price, okay? Then chances are it's a momentum shift, right? And momentum has shifted and we're likely to see some follow through on that. So not only can you use them, and, and that would obviously be a bear signal, um, but I wanted to point that out uh, because you can use that to your advantage. I'll show you in the charts, it'll jump out. For a bearish bias, you know, typically you'll see in a downtrend, you'll see minus 800 readings, right? Or you'll see it pretty much rainbow between plus 300 and minus six. You'll see that skew, um, you know, that mostly where the NYSE tick is trading mostly bill at zero line, right? And then again, when you get a plus 900, plus 1000 readings, um, and an uptrend, if it's a sustained move, that typically results in exhaustion, okay? So here's what it looks like on the chart. There's some other indicators in here. Um, real quick question. Uh, would you use the tick and AD specific to the market that you're trading? No, because, I mean, you can, but I wouldn't. I would use the NYSE because that's the broad market. I mean, you can, but I'm trading... You may be trading multiple markets, right? S and P, and even if you are trading S and P, it's still good to look at the tick, the the New York Stock Exchange tick, because that's the broad market. Okay, so for example, now I got to change the color on all these. Um, so for example, notice, remember I was saying that um, when we see a, a move to the upside, like this. And notice that's like one, two, three, four. Whenever we see a sustained move, you typically see three to four swings, typically four. And notice the tick. Okay, notice that here's the zero line right there, running right through. That's the zero line. Notice how the tick is skewed. Then all of a sudden we go sideways in here, right? And notice that the tick is, 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 is we're not seeing the highs pushing upwards towards, you know, five, 600 over here. Okay, they're actually very tight two-sided market. Okay, so if you see that, think about that. If you see that, and let's say you you traded it in here or in here, there's a signal in there to get long. This is this is a this this indicator. These indicators that I'm showing on my chart is a whole. It's really awesome indicators. Um, it, it has to do with one of our programs that we have at, at Educators. Um, but their signal lab program. Um, and there's a stack that I put together uh, that I just went over the last two or three weeks. And um, but notice that when if you had gone long in here and you know you're pushing up to the third or fourth push to the upside, and then you start to see the tick kind of shift like this, that's kind of a, a heads up that hey, the meat's off the bone, okay. Uh, you might want to go ahead if you're still in it, maybe you know start scaling out of it, or just go ahead and exit the trade because chances are this is it, right? There are other things you want to look at, context and all that, but for the most part, when where we see the tick range bound, okay, or even tight. I mean, this is it. This is actually really pronounced because it's really tight. Um, it suggests more of a neutral reading, okay, or just noise or choppy market conditions, and look at what's going on, right? And then look here. Right, we we try one last time to push to retest this high right there, and you can see we haven't broken down yet. But then all of a sudden, you know, you see that breakdown, and now the tick just a few bars past past this uh, vertical line here. There's clearly a momentum shift here. Okay, and notice you're getting extreme readings down in here. And this is a momentum shift, okay? 
And you can look to trade this. That one of the strategies that I employ is a momentum trading strategy that whenever I see momentum shift, if I did not catch it, if I didn't catch the reversal early on, sometimes I'll catch it there. If I missed it because I'm waiting for that momentum shift and it doesn't play out until afterwards, I'll get in right there when the tick pulls back to a zero line. So I'll get in right in here on the short side um, and just write it and then use a volatility stop. Uh, just uh, I like to use half standard deviation bands uh, for my stop to start with. So I like to use the volume average price with the standard deviation bands. Um, and I've talked about that before and in, 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 I may have talked about it in the previous uh, recording that we did um, back on September 6th, I think it was. Uh, David has that recording. Um, and uh, But notice here that, again, the tick, notice how, it, see how it, it, it's kind of, it, it's you've got a bearish skew to it. It's mostly below a zero line, okay? And then actually when it pops back above its zero line, that offers some opportunities to get short. There are certain other things that I look for in here to take the trade, um, but the tick will kind of give you a heads up that, hey, um, you know, this pullback is potentially coming to an end. Um, and uh, and then the same thing here. Notice again, here's your momentum shift again. Look at that new tick high, right? Right there, the market, the tick made a new tick high right here, right? Took out all these highs, new tick high right there. And that's early. I mean, that's early in the trend. So where do you get in? Um, well, the new tick high, I mean, if context is, it's a larger time frame is all bullish, you can, you know, you get in early on. Uh, if you want a little more confirmation, wait for that tick to pull back. And you're literally getting in somewhere in here. Okay. Which is still, you know, and then you use volatility stop. Um, so just to show you guys that, you know, you can use, um, you can follow a process that you've learned from, you know, some of the uh, presenters here today, uh, but you can use the internals like this and get in there, start looking at it, start noticing these things. And um, all of a sudden you'll have a better understanding and, and kind of be able to read the market, you know, gauge the market intraday. Here's another example where um, you have a, sorry, I was looking at the clock. We have a bullish bias here. And again, I mean, we did pull back, but notice the tick, what's it doing? It's, it's got a bullish skew. It's mostly above zero, right? This blue line is your zero line. Okay, so, and that's confirming the trend. So let's say you bought it in here or even on this little pullback, okay? And one of the things I wanna show you guys is when we see a sustained move, we typically see one, two, three, four. So expect it. Don't go for just 10 ticks in here. And then you're leaving, you're leaving too much money off, you know, off the table. Go for it. I mean, if it's know where you're at in the cycle of things, you know, know where you're at. Um, if you get a reversal, okay, there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. Actually, even got a little five in here. You got five swings to the upside. Um, know where you're at. Start looking at that. I talked about this um, market structure uh, again in that last last in the Synergy Traders event. Uh, I keep referring back to that because this kind of builds on that. So that was a fun class. And um, but yeah, and then notice here when the market reversed. And two, there's you know there are other clues on this day using the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline line that. Thanks, David, for posting that. I appreciate it. Um, there are clues on the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline line that tells you, hey, we're chances are we're in a two-sided day today. Okay. And I will show you that next. Um, and so you know, okay, do I fade this or do I look for a resumption? You know, is it going to go higher? Well, there I, I'll show you on, on the, in the next when we when we talk about the AD line. Okay. So, but notice here when the market started trending lower, right? And let's say you shorted it. Let's say you nailed it right there, okay? Because you looked at everything, context is sideways or even down. Um, you look at the, the advanced decline line is, is, is 
possibly oscillating around a zero line or even slightly negative, suggesting that when more stocks are declining than advancing. And we'll get into that. And you look at this and you're like, hey, we just had you know, a momentum shift here. Got a new tick low right there. So you know, I'm going to sell the pullback in here or in here. Let's say you sold it in there or in there, which is perfect. Okay. And um, you're holding on to the trade and, and you're looking at this, you're like, hey, you know what? I'm short here. And you look at this and you're, you're watching this and you're like, I want to hold on to this trade until I get some type of new tick high, right? Where it closes above. And then you'd be out right there. So you can use the tick, for example, to hold on to your trades longer, time to market, all of that, okay? It's a very powerful, in my opinion, um, I mean, it's the best market internal uh, that there is, in my opinion. Um, the advanced decline line is, is can be powerful. Um, you definitely want to use that with context. But the tick, if somebody were to tell me, hey, you can only use one market internal, and it would be the, the New York Stock Exchange tick because of that. You can gauge momentum in there. You can see momentum shifts right here, okay, and so forth. And we went sideways a little bit, but then we eventually broke to the upside. Um, but notice this again, you know, we're going sideways and what's, what's the tick doing? It's just choppy, right? And then here it shifts. See, it starts to shift here. So we go from... We go from mostly like this between, I don't know what, but maybe 400 down to minus 700. Then all of a sudden we shift up like this, right? Um, and uh, so there's momentum shift there. That And you look at price action too. You got trend line break. Right here across there, you got trend line break right here. It's an upside breakout. Okay, and you got location. You got everything saying get get long right there. Um, so, uh, and again, you can use the tick. You know, if you were gonna if you're gonna trade this, notice how the tick is mostly bullish, and then right in here we start to see, you know, a little bit of of you know towards the end of the day, it's like three twenty in the afternoon Eastern time, we start to see a little bit of um, pullback or correction. You know, that's still a good trade from down here up to here, okay? Uh, and, and let's, you know, you can always implement some type of trailing method, trailing stop method or whatnot. I've got some ideas. So we don't have time for that here. But um, even if you just caught that move, you know, from here to here, okay, 35, that's, uh, what is that, 25-point move, okay? So that's a nice move on the S&P. So, or the micros, whatever. I mean, the multiple contracts. So, does that make sense? Is this specific to Signal Lab? No, the uh, the tick. No, you can get that on Thinkorswim. Um, that's not specific to Signal Lab. The, the the New York Stock Exchange tick. No, these indicators are. Uh, but you can use moving averages. I didn't have time to put together a chart with moving averages, and I just went over this to our group. I went into more in depth detail. And we implemented it on Friday and did some live trades with it. Um, and it, obviously, they all worked out nicely. You know, we just lined ourselves with context and everything worked out nicely. Uh, so, but yeah, the indicators you do see in here, the target and stop channel, the blue and red pullback areas is the indicator. And then the red and blue, um, the really tight dotted line here, that's a, a signal lab indicator. Um, the rest are just basic indicators. Um, that are available on pretty much any platform. Uh, but you can use moving averages in, in lieu of, like I like to use a 13 EMA in lieu, and I think I went over that, in lieu of this, in lieu of that, whoops, wrong color. Uh, let's go with white. So in lieu of this red line here, I, I use a 13 EMA, and that actually get me a little bit better entry too. Um, so, all right. Um, question three, three, seven, nine, six, six. Can it be used in other time frames instead of one minute? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. I like to look at more noise because it's faster, right? So you'll see that you also have to experience, you'll experience more noise. So you just kind of have to learn how to filter that out. 
but yeah, definitely. You can use it on like a two, three, four, five minute chart. Anything beyond five minute, you know, then it's just, there's a whole lot going on that you're missing out on. So, um, and I don't just trade off one minute chart. Every time I, when I'm, or whenever I'm trading, I have two charts and Doc, when he comes on board, he'll probably talk about this, how the markets are fractal. I use a 30 minute chart and a one minute chart. You can use a 30 and a three or five or two or four, whatever. Um, and, and that's fine too. Um, so yeah, definitely. I like using the one because I like to see more noise. Um, I just, I've learned how to filter it out, uh, which I didn't at first. I used to use a three minute um, and now I use a one minute because I learned how to filter it out. So now the next market internal that you can use to gauge overall market sentiment is the New York Stock Exchange advancing and declining issues. Okay, it represents the difference between stocks listed on the on New York Stock Exchange that are advancing in price um, minus those that are declining in price, okay, compared to yesterday's close. So for example, 1,600 stocks trading above their close yesterday and 800 stocks trading below their close yesterday would give you a plus 600 AD reading. Okay, and think about that. Look at that. So I got to change color again. <laughs> So 1,600 stocks above their close yesterday and 800 stocks below would give you a plus 1,600 AD reading, okay? So this is broad market strength. And I'll go through these values and the same thing here. That would be broad market weakness, okay? Let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, if for the most part, you see the AD oscillating, okay, above or below the zero line between plus 1,000 and minus 1,000, okay, it suggests more of a neutral day. And I, I'll show you some examples, okay, like a choppy market. So again, you can use this to help you determine, hey, do I fade extremes and buy here and maybe even sell up here? Or am I expecting the market to go higher and, you know, buy pullbacks, right? Well, when you see um, the, for example, the advanced decline line pegged at 1500 or higher, like it was last Thursday, okay, it was pegged at like 2500. You don't even think short, okay? You just buy, buy every dip, buy the dip, right? Um, if the market gaps open lower, and sometimes the market will gap open lower, right? And then the AD trends higher. That's why I like to use a moving average on there too. That suggests the market will likely continue to high, go higher. So, because it sometimes, you know, here's zero line, it'll gap open down in here and then it'll just do this all day, right? It may never actually push above 1500, but you still may have broad market strength because it's trending. So that's where it can get tricky. And that's why, you know, no matter what, you always want to look at market context Look at that larger time frame, okay? Doc will probably go over it today, um, talking about fractal energy and fractal trading. Um, and um, on the, just on the flip side, if we see the AD pegged at minus 1500, okay, or lower, it, chances are the market is just gonna continue to go down, okay? Or it can gap open higher and then the trend's lower, all right? So what does that look like on a chart? Okay. This day was, I have no idea. Oh, here, 11.10. So when was this? This was last week. Um, and we had a similar day on, oh, well, yeah. This, well, this was Thursday last week, right? But no, yeah, because Friday was the 11th. So this was Thursday. Um, notice that, with after the first hour, right by ten thirty. Okay, look at look at where your AD is. Typically by ten thirty, the the you know, or even by ten ten fifteen, uh, the market sometimes will let you give you clues that hey, we're likely to just trend higher all day, and look at where it's pegged, like twenty five hundred. So you can Google how many stocks are on the New York Stock Exchange. If somebody wants to do that, go ahead. Um, 
but there's there's clearly a whole lot more stocks advancing when you look at the total of of New York Stock Exchange stocks. It might be like 32 or 3600. Let's say it's 3500 for for simplicity. So that means that 2500 are advancing and only a thousand are declining and trading below yesterday's close. So on this day, and and, and if you guys recall, the market had just broken out of a, a larger time frame balance. So on this day. It's like it was all just focused on longs only. So that allowed for you know buying opportunities, you know, on on pullbacks in here, you know, into, for example, a zone of some sort. You may have a horizontal zone there. You may have a set of indicators like moving averages or whatever to tell you, okay, this is location, this is where I want to trade. Um and if anything, you know, using what I'm showing you here will confirm, hey, yeah, I definitely want to be long, you know, because you may have like, I know some people they use, you know, support and resistance zone. So you may have a zone, you know, running right through here like this and another one running right through here like this. And it's like, well, what do I do? Do I sell this? You can, but the best thing would be to do is to wait for it because this is so strong. You've got broad market strength because you've got 2,500 stocks advancing. It's so strong in here. The best thing to do is wait for it. And then you catch this run, right? So by trading this, you're, you know, you're getting maybe a dollar, $5 bills by waiting for this, you know, you're getting twenties and fifty hundred dollars bills. You know what I'm saying? So trade with context. You can use these internals to help you also gauge intraday market momentum, okay? Here's an example of a bearish bias day, right? We'll notice in here that market, the AD opened up around slightly positive, right? Then all of a sudden, you know, we saw selling come in, right? Uh, and if you look at context, the 30-minute chart, you probably had a re good reason to get short in here if you look at the 30-minute chart. But let's say you missed it, right? And then you you want to wait for that first hour, okay? And notice that we're we're clearly trending down in here below that moving average, okay? Um, and now you're just looking for that pullback into an area, whether it's a zone, you know, um, a previous resistance area. If I if you look just to the left here, this these highs and this low kind of line up, and that makes this a great shorting opportunity. And I'm not just pointing in on the chart because, it, you know, because of hindsight. I mean, in real time, you have a prior day low right there. The market broke down, pulled back, and then more selling came in. So you have the breakdown, like kiss goodbye, if you will. Market comes back, retests in this area. Next time, first test, you got to trade it. No matter what, first test you have, unless you've got context, you know, unless you don't have context and everything is telling you the other way. But if you've got enough weight of evidence, first test, you got to trade it, especially when you're lined up with bigger picture context. Okay. And I, again, I talked about that, you know, on the September 6th. Um, so um, why would you favor tick over ED again? And is one better for three to five day swing trades? Uh, if you're swing trading, honestly, I, 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 don't, I don't think it's very useful. Um, you know, unless you're unless you're timing an entry or an exit for your swing trade, you know, on that day that you're going to enter or exit, then it can be useful. Um, but if you're just day trading, uh, it can be totally very useful. Um, I like the tick better because uh, there's you have to get really good at you want to get really good at reading context. And the advanced decline line is kind of, it It will, sometimes it'll do, if you just follow it blindly, which I used to do, it would tell you one thing and then the market would do something, you know, it would do, it would, it would, the higher time frame trend would play out. And then you're like, oh, this doesn't work. But it, well, it does. But the problem is, is you're giving more weight to the advanced decline lane than you are the higher time frame. You still got to give more weight to the higher time frame 
And I talked about that in the September 6th recording. You've got to give more weight to the higher time frame and use the advanced decline line kind of as a consultant, just you know, as extra confirmation. There are some other things you can look at that I look at are the what used to be the FANG stocks. Now they're the MANG stocks, you know, Meta, Amazon, Apple, NVIDIA. It used to be Netflix, now it's NVIDIA and Google. I'll look at those and see what they're doing. And if they're pegged around three and a half, you know, three to 5% down, and this is bearish, I'm not even thinking longs. I'm shorts only. I'm taking shorts only. That's it. And, you know, because because I used to do the opposite of what I'm doing now, and I would lose money. Now I don't do that. And I don't lose money like, you know, like I used to. I mean, I still get stopped out and, and whatnot. I mean, that's normal. But my losses are small. My wins are big because I'm trading with context. And when you're trading with context and in a direction of, you know, that intraday momentum, your, your trading is a whole lot less frustrating. And more often than not, if you've got location and you may be really good at picking location and whatnot, and, you know, looking at support and resistance, but if you're entering that location, then more often than not, the market will lollygag in and around there, right? And just kind of go two-sided. Um, and it'll spend some time in here where you can usually manage the trade. Because usually after about nine or 10 minutes, if the trade hasn't, you know, if, if, if I'm short here and then after about nine or 10 minutes and the trade is just going sideways, I'll start unwinding it. I may actually exit a portion and then that reduces my risk and then it follows through. And that, that's okay. I'm okay with that because there'll be another opportunity, especially since we're seeing broad market weakness here with it pegged at minus 1500 or lower and it's below you know, the moving average. Right. And context is probably bearish too. So, uh, I'll, you know, even if I enter the trade with only two thirds of position because I had to cover a portion because whatever the market went sideways for a while, you know, in here I can add to the trade with even just one contract or whatever, you know, a third, a third of a position, whatever that is. If it's one, two, three, five, whatever contracts, how many contracts that is. Here's an example. Notice, big example here. Look at this. See how it's pegged around 2,500 on this chart to the upside? This is pegged around, well, it trended down and then it was pegged below 1,500 pretty much after 12 o'clock. Now notice this day. What's it doing? It's just oscillating around a zero line. Okay. Then finally, we get a little trend here and we get kind of an upside breakout right here. There's your upside breakout. Um, you'd have to look at context too, but, um, but notice that, you know, right in here, it, it, it actually never traded back below, uh, zero, but here's the thing. This is where the tick would come into play on a day like this. The tick would be helpful to tell you, Hey, uh, what's the likelihood of, you know, a retest of these highs right here. What's the likelihood of those holding? Okay, well, based on the AD, you know, and being that it's one, two, three, fourth test, it's more likely to break it. Whenever you see a balance area, okay, like this, all right, and you have one, two, three here, and you got one, two, three here, chances are in fourth test, it's going to break. And some of the best trades are when market is bullish and you get the breakdown and then it cut, it pulls traders in and then it reverses. And if it takes out the midpoint of that, it's usually gone. And then that's it. Cause these traders that went short are caught on the wrong side. Um, and usually what'll happen is, you know, it'll do this and the tick will actually tell you, okay, no, if this isn't, this isn't, this isn't a true breakdown. It'll usually give you a heads up. So, um, you know, on a day like today, with the AD oscillating, and, and if you had a neutral bias in the tick, you know, you're selling, you're selling here, okay, and buying here. And you can use your own entry techniques, okay? You can watch that recording uh, that I did on September 6th, and I think I went over some entry techniques in there. So definitely take advantage of it.
Okay. Um, Raj, is the ADD indicator also in Thinkorswim? It is actually. Um, yes, dollar sign ADD. Okay. So again, guys, uh, keep in mind, okay, you never want to lose sight of the bigger picture context. All right, look at the larger time frame chart. You know, ask yourself, is the market just breaking out of a larger time frame balance area or consolidation? Is the market, are we seeing a sustained move? Okay, three to four pushes to the upside. Is the move potentially becoming exhausted, right? After three or four pushes, chances are the meat's off the bone. You know, we could go sideways or reverse. Um, where is price relative to the reversal? Okay, is it just starting? Okay, so let me go back and do this again. Uh, color, 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 color. Black. So where is the price relative to the reversal? You know, market moves down, right? Reverses here. Is it that first pullback? If so, chances are you're going to get, you know, a couple of new highs out of this. You know, one, two, three, maybe four, right? If it's up here and you're buying here, hey, you know what? It's already gone. One, two, three. This is the fourth push up. All right. It may go sideways. Chances are it's going to go sideways. It can continue or it can reverse, right? We don't, you don't know. Um, that's what you, but, but this will tell you. I mean, the internals, when price is going sideways in here, the internals will kind of give you some clues what's going to happen. Okay. And you can use that, you know, look for that bullish bias or bearish bias. There's divergences you can look for, all of that. Um, you do want to put more weight on market context. Okay. So again, I would encourage everybody in here, hit that recording link that David posted in. Watch that. In addition to you watching this again, and you can kind of merge the two together, the concepts and, and tactics that I talk about in September 6th and today, and merge those two together. And I'm sure it'll help you in your trading. Okay. You want to put more weight on market context, but you can use these internals just like I've outlined here for confirming your trades, right? Staying in trades longer, not overstaying your welcome, taking and and and, and taking profits off the table. Okay. Uh, and again, you know, I went over that in the um, September 6th uh, link that, uh, that David posted here in the chat. So, and before I wrap it up today, guys, I know it's early, but that's okay. Um, before I wrap it up today, I wanted to share one more thing with you. Okay. If you liked what we talked about here today, um, I've got the perfect thing that will help you scale that. Okay. Uh, what we've got is this thing called robot lab. All right. It allows you to take everything that I've shown you here and, or everything that you're already doing. Okay. And scale it. All right. And I'm not selling anything. Um, but what I'm offering you is for you to come and learn about how to do that. Okay. So later today at 4.15, uh, I'd like to invite you to a free master class where you'll learn a uniquely proven way that you can use fully automated day trading systems to go from zero to full-time trading. Okay. Or if you're already trading full-time to add another stream of income. Okay. I'll be there. All right. I'm not going to present. Um, I'll be doing a Q and A at the end with Christian, who is the presenter. Uh, he is the guy that is the architect behind Robot Lab, okay? And you're going to absolutely love him, right? Transparent, down to earth, um, just like the next speaker. Is he here? Yeah, Doc's here. Hey, Doc's in the house. Um, so, but now before I show you my 15 bot portfolio, um, what I want to do is give you a sneak peek of what you're going to see, you know, later today, if you guys decide to join us. Let me post that link in there. Um, let me get it here and let me post it in there for you guys. There it is. So there's a link to register for today. Okay. Um, but let me just give you a sneak peek. All right. What you're going to learn. So it's about 60, maybe 75 minutes, uh, with some time for Q and A at the end. And I'll be there at the end, definitely for Q and A and monitoring the chat during the presentation. Uh, but here's what Christian is going to talk about. All right. Here's what you're going to learn. He's going to talk about our back gradation certainty secret and what that even means. So this way, you'll know what to expect from each automated trading strategy. 
He'll show you how you can slash risk. As we all know, drawdowns are a huge issue, right? Especially if you have a small account and you're training robots. Um, he'll show you how to create a portfolio of bots. Okay, not just one bot, but a portfolio of bots that minimize drawdowns and maximizes profits. Okay, it's not about one bot. It's about a portfolio of bot, bots. Okay, so in fact, in the next slide, I'm going to show you a portfolio that I created that's made up of 15 bots, which it minimizes drawdowns. Okay, and actually, most of our members are running it each day. All right. Christian is also going to discuss with you the number one automated day trading system mistake that traders make, and he'll show you how to avoid it. Okay. And finally, he'll show you a zero to full time income trading action plan. So you'll learn a step by step plan for scaling your portfolio of bots and build your account over time. All right. And of course, you know, at the end of the webinar, I'll be there. We'll save some time for QA. Okay. I don't want to bore you with all the details here. Um, you know, Christian will go over those later in, in uh, today's class. All right. So now real quick about that 15 bot portfolio that I was talking about. Take a look at this equity curve. Okay. This is on the micros. And I just, I'm doing micros because I want you guys to see what's possible with micro contracts, literally one micro contract. Okay. From May 6th of 2019, uh, May 6th, 2019 is when the, May, the, the micros began trading in May. Uh, the the S the ES or the MES MNQ the Dow the Ross M2K M MGC Gold MC well it was actually MCL started trading in July of 21, but we have you know the data all the way back for gold and whatnot. Um, but take a look at these performance metrics, okay? Look at this. The total net this is over a three and a half year period or so. Um, look at the total net profit and look at your drawdown. Okay, so the drawdown is only 2,800 and the potential is there for 111. Okay, okay, so think about it. Your drawdown is only two and a half percent. All right, this is a portfolio I worked with. I worked with another client and we came up with a 12 bot portfolio and we started adding just like, we started adding some more bots to it. We had a really good 12 bot portfolio that minimized drawdowns. I think we got the max drawdown to like 2,300. It was under 25. The goal was keep drawdowns under $2,500. Okay. So we came up with this 12 bot portfolio and then we, we started adding like five or six more bots. And then we, we nailed it down to 15, you know, uh, and took away three more and just added three to it. Um, and, and we also had that 12 bot, we call it the dazzling dozen. Okay. Uh, this is the flourishing 15 bot portfolio that we call uh, but look at these performance metrics, okay? Literally two and a half uh, percent drawdown, okay? It's got a, it, it only has a 55% winning percentage, but the winning percentage, you know, isn't that important. Look at the profit factor. It's almost two to one, okay? And remember, this is an automated strategy. So it's not discretionary trading, okay? So you will have drawdowns, but again, it's only $2,800, okay? So if you have a ten fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 account, I mean, that's, what is it? That's 28% on a $10,000 account. That's even, that's less than 20% on a $15,000 account. And you could do this with micros, okay? Look at this. I love this chart um, because you can really kind of get it, you know, an expectation. Um, this is a historical monthly net profit distribution of, of this bot portfolio, this 15 bot portfolio. And it shows you how it's performed. It gives you an idea of what to expect each month. Look at this. Only six losing months. Let me change the color again. Color white. We only had six losing months here. Okay. Over this, right? Three, four, five, six. Over this entire period. January was, yeah, that was a, that was a losing month. But then look at the next month. We made everything back. So year to date, I mean, well, you can see it right here. Here's year to date. Um. You can just add it together, right? But not, notice though, notice this, like, and I think this is the largest losing month, actually. Look at that. So that's your largest losing month out of all these. This is pretty close to it. But look at the gains, okay? And the key is, is the key, honestly, the, the, the key to this is letting the bots run and do their job and letting the long-term results play out because they work. 
Uh, I'm doing it. Members are doing it. Um, it literally takes a few minutes each day, okay, just to check on it. So, um, again, guys, this is with one micro contract, okay? Um, gaining, look at the, the gains here per month with one micro, all right, with this 15 bot portfolio. This is why most of our members are trading this portfolio in their live accounts. Everyone I talk to, and everyone that, that's, that, that joins us in RoboLab that's new, they want the 15 bot portfolio. We've got different portfolios and whatnot, and you can learn more about that in, in, in the class today at 415. But this is this is like it. This is the portfolio, to, and we, you know, I I encourage folks to jump on this portfolio because it works, and it'll get them to where they need, they need to go the fastest, in my opinion. Um, because I've done all the homework, I've been at this for a couple of years now using automated strategies, and it, it works. Okay, um, and literally all we have to do is enable the strategies each morning. Okay, or you could just let them. I enable them on Monday, and I shut them off on Friday after market close, and I check on them in the morning just to make sure everything's working and they're they're enabled and I haven't lost a connection. But I'm on a VPS. I, I set all this up on a separate um, uh, what, a VPS. Um, Oh my gosh, Vir virtual private server. Um, and that, you know, then I, I don't interfere with it. I just, I just let it run. Um, again, most, most of our members are, are running it on a VPS too. Um, so, so when you do that, you can just log in remotely from anywhere and, and check and see how it's doing. And then two, when it's out of VPS, um, you know, it's separate from your computer. You don't, you don't have to worry about uh, data connection issues. It's on all the time. Right, so um, here's here's an example um, of this 15 bot portfolio in an account. Uh, I've been running this in an account since October 7th. Okay, here's the trade performance summary. Again, trading one micro. All right, so in just in well 38 days actually 38 days since October 7th. Um, it you know that's five thousand a month. Um, now, not every month is like that. You saw that, right? There, there's losing months in here. Um, but this is just, you know, real-time results, live account from um, October 7th, okay? It may not seem like a lot of money, okay, for some, but for most, um, you know, the, uh, for most, I mean, I mean, that should cover most of your bills, right? And you don't have to do anything. You literally set it up and let it run, okay? Um, it's consistent, it minimizes drawdown, and it's scalable, okay? This is just one contract, all right? Two micros would have been about 10, 10K, okay? Five micros would have about 27 and a half K, all right? And then one E-mini or full-size gold and crude, because this trades um, mostly E-mini S&P. I think it's got four or five NASDAQ bots in it. Um, and that those that's where the that's where some a lot of the profits come in with from the Nasdaq because it's more volatile. Um, and then the gold and crude bots, they kind of act as a hedge, and that's what reduces the drawdowns. That's what keeps those drawdowns small. You pull those out, and you won't have you know you have bigger drawdowns, right? So, um, but I, I mean, this is real time results. From 10.7 to let's see, this is not strategy analysts, trade performance. Okay. So if this looks like something that you guys would like to learn more about and or you know start scaling your discretionary trading with a portfolio of these automated strategies and potentially create you know another stream of income for yourself, then again, I would encourage you to join us later today, right? 415. Let me post that link in there. Oh. Yeah, it's already in there. I'll post it in there again. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, in fact, just for joining us, you get a free robot. Okay. Um, so if you want to come spend some time with us, um, the idea behind this robot that's free, there, you know, this is, uh, it's not one of my favorite bots. Um, it doesn't, it, it works okay in a in a in a uh, portfolio, but by itself, it, it's not like it's you know. The idea is is that hey, we give you this bot so you can kind of check it out, see what it's like. But really, I mean, you know, it's free, right? 
the idea is just, hey, this is how it works. This is what it looks like. This is how things work. Um, if you really want to make, you know, if you want this to work, then um, join us at Robot Lab. Okay. Um, but, and the Christian will go for all those details. Okay. So the idea with today in this session is get you to come join us at 415. Okay. Christian's going to off. He's going to go over everything because like when I first started, I, I didn't do automated strategies. It was primarily discretionary trading. So I had to learn all this. And, you know, I never thought about portfolios before. Um, and that's his main focus is, hey, it's all about portfolios, right? And, and several bots working together, hedging each other. And, but at the same time, in the long run, you know, you're coming out ahead. So if you're on the fence, right? I mean, I was skeptical at first. I'm a discretionary trader and I started trading a few of these bots and, and another live account, started to see the results, positive results, okay? And results that, for the most part, actually matched back-tested results. There will be discrepancies between real-time results and back-test. And sometimes, actually, my live results are better than the back-test, usually. Um, small numbers, uh, insignificant, okay? Um, so now, you know, just like myself, we've got several members um, that have got a handful of bots. We turn on every morning or we turn them on once a week, um, check on them throughout the day, okay? Um, check on them again at the end of the trading day, just make sure they're flat, right? They're supposed to close at the end of the day. And for the most part, they do. Every once in a while, you need to manually close it, but you shouldn't have to. Um, I like to say they're kind of my, like my employees um, and they're just working for me in the market. And uh, the one thing, you know, you want to keep in mind is that not every day is a winner, okay? But overall, you know, um, long-term averages and law moving averages, you, you got to let the uh, results play out, okay? And the portfolio will make money in the long run. Uh, and usually I say about, it depends on where you start in the equity curve, right? If you're buying, if you start your new portfolio at new equity highs, okay, it's like buying a stock at the high, you know, at the high, right? Let it pull back and then initiate a portfolio. Um, and you don't know where you're at. So I say, you know, at least 30 days, but typically sometimes you need 60 to 90 days, you know, before you like really start to see results. Sometimes you can see results right away in two weeks. And, other and then you might get a 30 day period where it just kind of stagnates and then all of a sudden it picks up again. So, but what this does is it, it provides, it prov it's provided me and other traders with a stream of income that just takes a few minutes each day. I mean, who wouldn't want that, right? So if you do, or just want to learn more about fully automated day trading strategies, join us later today, okay, in a few hours, 4.15. And um, yeah, I'll see you this afternoon, guys. So, um, and again, uh, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah. So I'm sure you will enjoy um, the next presenter.